Poland, a nation of emigrants. Think about all the Polish neighborhoods in cities like Pittsburgh or Chicago, or how nearly every town in Britain has its own Polski sklep, selling pierogies and tisky beer, frequented by Marek or Marius, the local builders who fixed up just about everything in the town. And who can forget Marie Curie, the brilliant scientist who made groundbreaking discoveries in radioactivity, or the composer, Frederick Chopin. Poles have often had to leave their native Poland, which has either lived under foreign occupation or has found itself mired in relative poverty compared to its Western European counterparts. During the 1980s, though, Poland was the epicenter of efforts to collapse the communist project that had been imposed on Eastern Europe through leaders like Lech Walesa in the shipyards of Gdansk, and even the future Pope, John Paul II, a native of Wadowice. When the Iron Curtain finally fell on November 9, 1989, thanks in no small part to Walesa and the people of Poland, Poland and its neighbor, soon to be united Germany, had a massive economic gap, with the latter 13 times richer in terms of GDP per capita. To Poles who had languished in the gray, squalid dystopia of communism, capitalist Germany seemed like a mirror image utopia with immaculate highways, clean cars, and propaganda-free education. Writing in The Guardian, Polish economist Anna Gromada describes the economic transformation of Poland. In the 1990s, Eastern Europe, including Poland, began its capitalist journey and attracted foreign investments with its cheap labor, and wages were much lower compared to Western Europe. Car factory workers in Germany earned almost four times more than their counterparts in Poland. Gramata goes on to describe the transformations that took place when Poland then joined the EU in 2004, which opened doors to new opportunities, with many Poles using their newfound ability to work in European countries with higher wages to do exactly that. The country also saw a massive influx of EU funds, boosting infrastructure and living standards. Between 2010 and 2016, Poland received 2.7% of its GDP as EU transfers annually. Poland also developed an economic symbiosis with Germany, which helped Poland weather the 2008 financial crisis, becoming an island of growth amid a sea of recession. Poland's exports to Germany soared, making Germany almost as important to Poland as its next six trade partners combined. Today, Poland has one of the longest periods of uninterrupted growth in European history. Its GDP has increased tenfold nominally, sixfold when corrected for the cost of living. Unemployment is at a record low of 3%, and the country boasts higher female life expectancy than the US and lower infant mortality than Canada. The transformation is evident in Poland's car industry, which now produces high quality components locally rather than importing them from Germany. Poland has also become a hub for innovative industries, from molecular diagnostics to electric car batteries. The number of births last year hit the lowest level since World War II. For the 11th consecutive year, deaths have exceeded births, resulting in a population decline of nearly 1 million over that period. This is despite a significant number of Poles repatriating from places like the UK, now that Poland is rapidly converging to a similar level of development. Poland will start to overtake the UK economy by 2030, while still having a more affordable standard of living. Warsaw's emergence as a tech hub has also made staying in Poland more attractive for a lot of young, well-educated Poles. However, this is proving to not be enough to solve the demographic problems in the country. According to new data from Statistics Poland Gus, there were 272,000 live births in 2023, a drop from 305,000 the previous year. Deaths totaled 409,000, slightly down from 448,000 in 2022, returning to around the pre-pandemic level of 410,000 seen in 2019. Only 19,000 births were recorded in December 2023, the lowest monthly total since the war. By the end of last year, Poland's population stood at 37.6 million, 130,000 lower than the previous year, and approximately 900,000 less than the 38.5 million recorded in the 2011 national census. We have been observing population decline continuously for over a decade, Gus noted. In 2023, it was smaller than in the two previous years, but still much larger than before the pandemic. The former national conservative law and justice PIS government, which was in office until earlier this year, attempted to counter this demographic decline with various pro-family policies aimed at encouraging childbirth. The introduction of the flagship 500-plus child benefit program 
in 2016 initially led to a brief rise in births, but this trend quickly reversed, leading to a rapid decline. At the same time, Poland has experienced record levels of immigration over the last decade. Gus estimates that mothers from abroad now account for 5.5% of births. Last year, the agency predicted that Poland would need to attract nearly 2 million immigrant workers over the next decade to address its demographic decline. However, there is one type of immigration the Poles are still not totally comfortable with, immigration from Muslim-majority countries. There have always been Muslims in Poland. Historically, before World War II, Poland's Muslim population was predominantly Tatar, present since the 14th century. Tatars are often European in appearance, and Tatar women rarely wore hijabs, meaning that Muslim Tatars were practically indistinguishable from the Polish Catholic population. Following World War II, Boundary changes post-war left most Tatars outside of Poland, leading to a more diverse Muslim community. Today, Poland's Muslim population, estimated at 25,000 to 40,000 people, includes around 5,000 Lipka Tatars and a larger number of recent immigrants from countries like Syria, Chechnya, Iraq, Tajikistan, and Bangladesh. Poland's experience with immigration, particularly from Muslim-majority countries, has been challenging. The 2015 European migrant crisis brought Islamophobia to the forefront, with many Poles associating Islam with violence and terrorism. Anti-Muslim sentiments have been exacerbated by the media and political rhetoric, particularly from the former National Conservative Law and Justice PIS government, which linked national security with migration and framed refugees negatively. Statistics reveal the public's attitudes. A 2011 poll showed 47% of Poles believed too many Muslims live in Poland, and a 2017 poll of Polish secondary school pupils indicated strong homophobic, anti-refugee, and Islamophobic prejudice. Between January and October 2017, 664 anti-Muslim hate crime proceedings were started in Poland, with Muslims being the most targeted group. However, the actions of Polish governments have been confusing. The former PiS government admitted 130,000 Muslim migrants in 2023 contradicting its anti-migrant stance, particularly against non-Christians, despite also constructing border walls to keep out African and Middle Eastern migrants and basing their re-election on anti-immigrant rhetoric. According to EU Statistics Bureau Eurostat, Poland issued approximately 700,000 first residence permits to citizens of 148 non-EU countries in 2022, making it the top issuer of permits in the EU. These permits allowed recipients to stay in Poland, but the Schengen area permits travel within the EU. Private Radio Zet reported, based on an anonymous diplomat, that Polish visas could be purchased outside the Polish embassy in an African country. The practice resumed after an inspection due to pressure from local officials. The Rzeczpospolita daily indicated that up to $5,000 might be paid for a visa issued outside the regular waiting system. The Interior and Administration Ministry denied the claims of large numbers of migrants entering Poland, stating that less than 30,000 workers from Muslim countries came in 2023. EU authorities accused Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko of weaponizing migration to destabilize Europe. Some migrants have died, their bodies buried in Poland, and even one Polish border guard was killed by a migrant during an altercation prompting a major backlash in Poland that more must be done. Poland views this surge as a coordinated effort by Russia and Belarus to fuel anti-migrant sentiment, boosting far-right parties. The country erected a $405 million metal barrier along 110 miles of its border with Belarus in 2022 to curb migrant inflows. Polish authorities allege Russia aims to flood the EU with migrants to strengthen far-right parties. Foreign Minister Radek Sikorsky claims many migrants have Russian visas, suggesting recruitment by Russia. The Belarusian opposition leader, Svetlana Tsikhanouskaya, also accuses Lukashenko of using migrants to blackmail the EU, aligning with Putin's interests. Whether Russia is funneling Muslim immigration into Poland or not, however, the truth of the matter is that as the Polish economy grows, it will need more people, and most of those may have to come from Muslim-majority countries. But what other options are there if Poland is so adamant about not receiving Islamic immigration? Perhaps Poland's best option, with its enormous diaspora and long keen to repatriate those with ancestors deported to Siberia under communism, 
could start offering an Israeli model of citizenship to its diaspora across Europe and the United States. As a major economic hub in Eastern Europe, the Poles could also look to further absorb people from culturally and linguistically similar countries like Ukraine or Belarus, where the standard of living is lower. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. We always love to hear your thoughts on these critical issues. So let us know what you think about the issues discussed in the video, like the Polish government's handling of the border situation, or how should Poland address the integration of Muslim migrants into its predominantly Catholic society? Or if you think that Poland has the capability and appeal amongst its diaspora to expand the recruitment of its diaspora Israeli style.